All right, hi there, everybody, and welcome to our Sports Beat Special College Football Preview. First, it was the Cougars, last week the Aggies, and today it's all about the Utes. Kyle Whittingham and the Utes coming off a disappointing 5-7 and seven season a year ago, 3-6 and six in the Pac-12, and they missed out on a bowl game for the first time in a decade. And as they enter the third season in the Pac-12 Conference now, Utah's picked to finish fifth in the South Division. The preseason rankings exactly how they finished a year ago. UCLA selected to win the South, followed by Arizona State, USC, Arizona, the Utes, and then Colorado. Oregon once again picked to win the North Division. Stanford second, then Oregon State, Washington, Cal, and Washington State. Pac-12 championship game will be played against the division winners at the home of the division winner with the best overall conference record. All right, so we're 26 days away from the Utes opener with Utah State in Rice Eccles Stadium. Five of the first six will be played up on the hill. Then after that, uh, the, after the Aggies, then the opener, Weber State comes into Rice Eccles, then the Pac-12 opener with Oregon State. Then it's off to Provo with the Cougars back home for two more against two of the best in the conference, UCLA and Stanford. Utah finishing the season with four of the last six on the road, including games at USC and at Oregon. Is difficult. Somebody said it's the most difficult in Utah football history, and one of the most difficult in the country. I haven't, you know, I have no facts to back that up, but, but I just know that it's going to be challenging. The challenge is on our plate, and, the, and being in the Pac-12 conference and all the things that have changed, the entire dynamics of this position has changed, and uh, I'm excited about uh, getting us back on track and where we need to be. All right, so the Utes returned 13 starters from a year ago, six on the offensive side. Let's bring in Jeremiah Jensen now. And, J.J., something's got to change here because the offense last year flat out was not very good at all, was it? Yeah, Rod, the Utes ranked 109th in total offense in 2012. Only Colorado was worse in the Pac-12. That's not good enough, and Kyle Whittingham knows it. He brought in Dennis Erickson to help turn things around. The key to a turnaround is the health and performance of a sophomore quarterback. I hope this is our time to shine, time to surprise people. The focus and the edge on the team kind of seems Kind of seems like we're taking that underdog mentality and really just getting to work, not talking too much. Up 7 nothing. Pressure. Ball came loose there. The offense disappointed in 2012. Kyle Whittingham brought in some help to change that. We didn't throw the ball well enough. we got to be much more productive, much more consistent, much more prolific in the throw game. It's one of the main reasons we brought Dennis Erickson in is to, to jumpstart that. The addition of Erickson won't matter if the Utes can't get better play from the quarterback position. It's been since Brian Johnson in 08 that we've started and finished the season with the same quarterback. And that, you know, we've got no continuity, no consistency there. And so that's got to change. The Utes are confident sophomore Travis Wilson can provide that change. He's got to play like a seasoned vet from day one. Overall, his playmaking ability, I mean, when you look at him and watch how athletic he is for his size, it's you know, ridiculous, you know, coming out of high school, national recruit or whatever, but um, just seeing that now applied with his work ethic and his vocal leadership is what's really improved the most. And you can, that really helps with his confidence, I think, uh, which is huge. Uh, he has worked his tail off since we got him in January of 2012 as a 200 pound true freshman right out of high school, early graduator. He's now 6'6 six, six and three quarters, 245, and really has worked his is uh, himself into a, a great position physically and mentally where he has complete command of the offense and uh, he's, you know, physical, physical wise, he's just a whole different person than he was a year and a half ago. Wilson should get plenty of help from the offensive line, which returns three starters, including potential star Jeremiah Patasi. There's depth at running back with Kelvin York, Bubba Poole, Lucky Radley, and Carl Williams all battling for carries. Wilson also has plenty of weapons to throw the ball to. Utah touchdown. In this ball game, the pocket stays clean over the top. Anderson. Kenneth Scott and Drez Anderson return a receiver. And Jake Murphy and Wesley Tonga could be one of the best tight end duos in school history. We're going to make more explosive plays this year as an offense. We really liked that last year. We didn't make a lot of big plays, you know, and especially in crucial situations. We didn't really, you know, we didn't help our defense out that much last year. We didn't do what we were capable of doing. And, um, I think Dennis Erickson and Coach Johnson have just kind of combined for this ultimate, you know, confidence boost 
or the offense. I don't really know how to say it, but I'm a kind of, we kind of feel like we have an identity finally. Um, now we need to apply that to a game, obviously. Spring ball is different than a game, but uh, we feel that we can have that fast-paced identity and hopefully make some big plays. The Utes will return to the spread offense under Erickson with him joining the staff. The Utes are the only team in the country with two National Coach of the Year recipients, Kyle Whittingham in 2008 and Erickson in 2000 with Oregon State. All right, welcome in the radio voice of the University of Utah, Utes, Bill Riley, ESPN 700. Thanks for coming in, bud. Zip, good to see you. All right, so let's get started. The biggest change, Dennis Erickson coming in to being the old man in charge, if you will, over uh, Brian Johnson. What kind of impact do you think that he will make? We've talked about it ever since right. he got hired, but now that we're here, what are we going to see in fall camp? Well, it's experience number one. I mean, he's coached for 40 years, so there's nothing that Dennis Erickson hasn't seen before. And in a lot of ways, he's the pioneer of this one back spread offense. He was doing this years and years ago back in his days at Wyoming. So I think the first thing everybody noticed in the spring was tempo. Everything was a whole lot faster. So you've got that. The experience in play calling is going to be a big, big deal, too, because let's face it, Brian Johnson's got a really bright future, sure. but last year was the first year he called plays. So this year, Brian working with Dennis, Dennis Erickson is going to probably, you're going to see a real difference in the play calling and the tempo of this offense immediately. One of the big knocks on the play calling a year ago, the running back John White, 10, 11, 12 carries a game. Is that over with? Are they going to use, if they've got a John White in the backfield, are they going to use him? Well, they, they've got to find out who they have right now. That's the big deal. Kelvin York returns from last year. Carl Williams returns from last year. You've got a handful of guys. Lucky Radley as well. Um, the best the, name in college football, by yeah, the way. Yeah, Lucky Radley. Yeah. Awfully good. They bring three guys in, two, two high school kids. Really talented group. But the thing is, they don't really know what they have yet. And really, if you look at Dennis Erickson's history, especially most recently at Arizona State, they don't really rely on one back. Yeah. His offense is more suited to two or three guys that maybe get 500, 600 yards in the season versus one guy that might pile up 11 or 1,200 yards. But really, the backs they've recruited and the backs they have in the system are more suited for the spread. They're not real big guys. They're not between the tackle guys, and that's probably better suited for the spread offense. Well, if they can get the running backs uh, gelling, that makes it easier for Travis Wilson. Is he the guy? Is he going to be on a short lease if he doesn't perform? the way they want him to right off the bat? No, I don't think it's a short leash. I think in camp, he goes in as the guy. I mean, he started seven games in the Pac-12 last year, played in all 12 games. So he was the guy in the spring. Scholes has been in the system a couple of years. He's behind him. Then he had the freshman, Brandon Cox, who was here in the spring. They're going to bring two quarterbacks in this fall. Connor Manning, who broke all Matt Barkley's passing records right. in Southern California, and a kid named Micah Thomas out of Texas. So you're going to have five quarterbacks. And talking to Brian Johnson and Kyle Whittingham both, they're going to make their minds up real early. But it's Travis Wilson's job. Somebody would have to take that away from him. Yes or no? All things being equal, everybody's healthy. Travis is just normal, not spectacular, not bad. Does he keep the job yes. the whole year? Yes. Okay. Because the offensive line is better. It is. It's, it's, it's the best offensive line maybe Kyle Whittingham's had well, that's in, great his, in his for a guy tenure like at the University of Utah. So they'll be able to run the football and protect Travis Wilson. Okay, stick around. We've talked offense. Now we're going to talk about defense. That's when we come back here with Bill Riley. Hi, welcome back to Sportsbeat College Football Preview. It's all about the Utes today. The Utah defense has been one of the best under Kyle Winningham for a long, long time now. But last year, with a number of injuries and a subpar performance all season long, their invincibility took a major hit. Let's bring back Jeremiah and J.J., the guys on defense, a little embarrassed by the way they struggled last year, right? Now, while they didn't struggle as much as the offense, the defense underperformed last season, well below the level expected at Utah. The loss of six starters, four of them to the NFL, may give cause for concern this year. But senior Trevor Riley says the defense is ready to prove people wrong. Uh, we need to win. And not time to rebuild. We need to win right now. Now motion Marquise Lee across. Barkley to throw. He's going to throw a screen past the woods in the flat. He's going nowhere. The defense has a chip on their shoulder with something to prove. When you're picked to stink, 
that makes you think, you know, I'm going to show these guys that they had it wrong and that University of Utah, you know, we're, we're winners and that you shouldn't bet against us. Kyle Whittingham and his coaches have been hard at work trying to improve the defensive deficiencies of 2012. Uh, we had two issues last year, red zone defense and the, our inability to take the football away. And that's that's something we've been very good at for a lot of years. And so we got to get those corrected. We've worked hard in the offseason to, to you know, address those issues. And, and we can't wait to get back on the field. The Utes lost six starters on defense, three on the defensive line, including All-American and first-round draft pick star Lotu Lele. Utes rush four. Here they come, off the edge. Tool steps up, and he's dragged down. Trevor Riley got him from behind. But with Trevor Riley, Nate Orchard, and Tenny Palapoy returning, the D-line will once again be the strength of the defense. Hey, man, the University of Utah is a defensive line university. We put a lot of guys in the NFL. You know, we think we got uh, a chance to be one of the best defensive fronts in the conference, if not the best, with you know, even with Star's departure. And uh, that's just where we've been. You know, the defensive line's been a strength of ours for a decade. You know, that's been a strong suit for us. The linebackers, we fully expect. I was raving about them last year. Didn't perform. You know, we had injuries. I don't think we started the same three consecutively, maybe twice in the whole season. And so those guys are all a year older, a year more mature, a year smarter. Brian Blecken will lead the linebacker position along with VJ Fajoko. Eric Rowe and Tyron Morris Edwards are back at safety. The most unproven position, cornerback. We're essentially starting over there. The, uh, you know, 95% of the snaps. Uh, we lost a graduation between Ryan Lacey and, and Mo Lee and, and Reggie Tops. All those guys played all the snaps. So a lot of talent at that position, no experience. But uh, you know, we feel that uh, you know, with the progress they made in the spring, if we can make that much progress again in fall camp, we'll be okay by the time the season starts. If linebacker play improves and some players step up at corner, the youths believe they have the potential to be one of the best defenses in the Pac-12. Like I said, we expect to win every game. I don't care if we're playing Alabama next first game of the season, we would, as a coaching staff and players, you have to expect to win. You have to have the faith that you're going to win the football game. So every week, if you have that faith, and if it come, if, there's no reason why you can't win. If you prepare hard enough, we have the athletes, uh, hopefully it works out for us. We're working towards that end. I think we've taken major steps in the last two years. Our last two recruiting classes feel very good about. Uh, still a young group of guys, you know, they're just freshmen and sophomores, but but uh, hopefully that's going to start to manifest. Utah is one of the few teams still using a 4-3 base defense, and even they are evolving to a 4-2 and will start a full-time nickelback. Expect to see even more 4-2 defense this year as they try to slow down teams like Oregon running the spread offense. Rod? I'm back here with the radio voice of the Utes, Bill Riley, ESPN 700. All right, we've talked about offense. Let's go to the defense side now. Where is the one spot that is the biggest concern for Kyle Whittingham right now? Well, for Kyle Whittingham, he says it's the secondary. Really? They're having to replace corners who have never played before and having to replace maybe two safeties. Loves the talent they have back there, but there's no real game experience in that secondary. Okay, we've heard that for the last five, six, seven, eight years. Oh, we don't know about the secondary. And, it's all, and that's the thing, it's always good. And then you put good. out a first or second round NFL pick. Well, that's why nobody ever really worries about Kyle Whittingham's defenses. Maybe early they have some struggle, but struggles, but they always seem to figure it out. But this year, when I talked to him at Pac-12 Media Day, he seems to think secondary, if only because nobody that's going to be starting back there has ever been a starter. Brian Blecken, you know, it's a senior year, started off great, kind of got in a little trouble, and now he's back for the final hurrah. Is he the stud on that linebacking group? He's the one guy that we know can make plays from his days playing at safety. Now, he's going to be a touch undersized at linebacker, but that's okay. But we know he can make plays. Now, the question is, they've got a lot of really good athletes, Rod, but the problem is nobody could stay healthy last year. Everybody yeah. was getting concussed and pulling hamstrings, so they have to find three guys they really like and then rotate some guys in behind them. Keep an eye on Vijay Fajoko at middle linebacker. Um, keep an eye as well on LT Filianga, Jacoby Hale, Rashawn Hooker. These are all names. Jared Norris. Now, all right, star, Motolele, gone, first rounder. Everyone wants to know when you lose a guy to a first right. round in the NFL draft, oh my gosh, how are we going to fill that hole? Do they have somebody? Yeah, they've got a guy who backed up Star last year. Now, Star played about 85% sure. of the snaps. He came in and left, came in and left whenever he wanted to. Uh, Tenny Palapoy is his name. He was a Juco All American, a Snow College kid, was terrific in the limited time he was on the field last year. He'll anchor the interior part of that defensive line. And then on the outside, Trevor Riley's healthy this year. Yep. No relation. Yep. Trevor yep. Riley. 
healthy. Uh, and then on the other side, Nate Fakuf, who's down Nate sure. Orchard, uh, are the other two guys on the outside. To be very honest with you, the, the defensive line outside of Star last year underachieved. There was a lot of hype around those guys, and I don't know that they necessarily lived up to that mm -hmm. hype. So, yeah, I think the guys that they've got penciled into that line this year can do a good job for them. I know everyone asks you this question. Give me a number of wins this year. I, All things being equal. I think they could be anywhere from five and seven to seven and five. I'll go with seven and five. I did that on the radio the other you day. You don't think they're going to make eight? Well, they could. But you, that's not in your house right now. I haven't, seen, I haven't even seen a practice yet. Okay. So this is my pre-fall yeah, camp. Well, of course it is. That's what so, everything is right now. Yeah, so I'll say seven and five right now. That's a two-game swing from a year ago. That'll get them in a nice bowl game in the Pac-12 Conference. All right, Bill Riley, ESPN 700, the voice of the youth. Thanks for coming in. And for coming in, we have goodies for you. I love it. Uh, Ruby River got a big old steak on us. Love you, that. You can go there. You got that. And also, OGO, OGO golf bag, travel I, bag. I love that even more. OGO.com. Go and check it out. Bill Riley, thanks, bud. Thanks, Yep. All right, so with the Utes pick to finish fifth in the South Division by the media, what are the other Pac-12 coaches and players saying about Utah? We wanted to know, so we asked. That safety, number four. Yeah, Brian Blecken. Dude's nice. Yeah? He's a hitter. Plenty again. Mikhail... What do you remember about Brian Blecken? What do you don't remember? He gave Robert, remember he sent Robert Woods on that little spin on that yeah. punt return. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> now Woods... He's on his feet and he's ooh, ooh, now he's stumbling ooh, 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 and he falls ooh, ooh, right in midfield. When we played them uh, last year, uh, surprisingly, they surprised me. I didn't think they was gonna come out the way they came out. The crowd is crazy. It's loud. <laughs> this is the first time in the conference, so it's, it, it takes time. You know, it takes time. Everybody know that new coaches. I mean, when a new coach come in, a new team move to this or that, it takes time. You know, to build it and build on that on that team and. and and, and just in that conference in general. And I, I think Utah's doing a real good job for themselves. They're moving up in the stand. I think they're going to do real good this year. Jake Murphy cuts back for a touchdown. I think the league is probably better. And again, I haven't been in, in the league, but just for a year and a half, better than it's ever been. And, and Utah is a team that can beat anybody. And I think our guys know that. I think Cal does a great job there. We played them one year when I was at San Jose State, and they beat our brains out. I mean, Utah's going to play hard. Um, you know, Coach Winningham, you know, he's done a, an awesome job of leading that program. And, um, you know, guys, you know, they've, they've produced so many good, talented players that, you know, we have to be prepared. It's a physical def defense. You know, it's like speed against defense. Uh, you know, that's what I like about those guys. Uh, they got great coaching staff, you know, great players, and, you know, great all-around team, I feel like. I got a couple of uh, friends I know that play at Utah, Drez uh, Anderson. Yeah, real good friend of mine, you know. It's, and playing there is real fun, too. You know, you guys' fans are uh, really into the game and everything. They've always brung a fight when we first played them. You know, the, in my freshman year, we, it took, we went down to the wire where we took the field goal to win, and we blocked it. And this past year, they came up on us, I think it was 14 to 21-0. And they're just always ready to play no matter what. They're, they, they, they've been kids from inner city that see us and, you know, just have that inner rivalry in some way. All right, welcome back to our Sports Beat College Football Preview. All about the Utes today. 26 days and counting from the opener in Rice Eccles Stadium with the Utes. Just over three weeks till we get all pumped up with some football viewing pleasure.